continue to do and and see a lot of things in the future that's going to happen you know you might say well brother cook how can you see in the future well i know in tone and i know through words that the lord has given each people or many people that have spoke to me and and i'm living that dream i'm living as joseph did the dream of you know one day he came to the place that he got to be just down one from pharaoh and i'm going to tell you i'm living that dream that god has promised me you know sister susan was teaching today about that his promises is true and his promises yea and amen. I'm going to tell you, if God has promised you something other, how many of you know it's the truth? And if he's promised you something other, it's going to come to pass. Many times we want it to come in our timing, but I'm going to tell you, it's always in God's timing and it's always on time. Everybody hear that? It's always on time, especially when it's God's timing. You know, there's a lot of things we want to see happen, a lot of changes that we want to see happen in our life and different things. And, you know, sometimes God is just waiting on you to move. I said, sometimes God is waiting on you to move so something can happen in your life. You know, if we, I, I wrote this week about, you know, if we sit still and we become stale, whose fault is it? It's our own fault. If we sit still and we become stale, it's our own fault. You know, I, I, I was watching uh, online and I was watching how some of you, you you're watching this at home. I'm going to tell you, I like to shake your hand. I like to hug your neck. I like to know who you are on a personal basis. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're sick or different things, you can go home and watch us online. That's fine. But I'd like to see you personally up front. I like to see you. I like to be able to shake that hand. I like to be able to hug that neck. I, I like to see you on a personal basis. Amen? Because I love you. You know, I love the Lord Jesus Christ, and I like being able to go and be able to talk to him in my own little corner and just get my time with him and then let him begin to speak to me. And, you know, if I talk to you, I like to look in your eyes and, and you look in my eyes when we're talking. I don't like telephone conversations as much as I like talking to you face to face. We need to learn that. Pastor Jim will tell you, they try to text me on that text thing. What I do, if you can call me, call me. If not, let's meet somewhere. Let's drink a cup of coffee. Let's talk on a personal basis because it's not that I want to smell your bad breath or you want to smell mine. But I want a relationship with you. I want to know who you are. I want to be able to learn who you are and learn your heart. You know, I, I, you know, we're putting all this together so we can put it overseas and different things and and, uh, you know, we, we have a lot of people, they're, they're getting comfortable in it. Oh, Brother Cook, you're get, already getting people mad. I'm sorry. I want to see you. I want a relationship with you. I, I want to be your pastor on a personal basis, not on a long-distance basis. I want a relationship. Me and my wife, we have a wonderful relationship with each other. And our relationship ain't because we're staying apart all the time. It's because I give her them smooches once in a while. This weekend, she needed prayer. I, I, I rubbed her back, and I, and I prayed for her. We, we come together with each other. God has put us together for a reason and for a purpose. He's put us together here to be leaders to you. And, and, and just as Susan was saying up here, the leaders, we want to see that all of you prosper. We want to see that all of you are in good health. And there's times that we will take some things that are what we call important things. We'll set them aside for you. And, you know, sometimes I wish you would set aside some things that you feel is important to do for us. One of the most important things to me when I accepted Christ as my personal Savior was to see the lost one for the glory of God. And I'm going to be honest with you. I had to be trained to see that. Did everybody catch what I just said? I had to be trained to see that. You know who trains me? No. All you people train me. Because you've been there. Now, don't get me wrong. I've been in, in church for many years now. But what I'm saying, it's the people that train people. What, we what do we teach all the time? Sheep beget sheep. We train each other. I can't train you. I, well, I might be able to train you on a telephone. But there's something about hands-on, ain't there, Albert? When you're a mechanic, 
and you want to learn something other, there's got to be hands-on. Susan, if you're a teacher's aide or a teacher, can you teach them long distance? I used to hate when my lecture, or not lecture, what do you call them, uh, professors, would be on a screen, not in the room with me, and they're telling me all this stuff that's going on, and I can't ask the question. Or I can't, you know, uh, intertwine with them on what I wanted to do because it was on a screen. Now, if you have a question, they tell you at the end, you can either, uh, back then I didn't have the email, I don't think, but uh, I think we could put a question in and they'd answer it the next time they came. I'm going to tell you, the next time they came, I probably wouldn't be interested in it. How would you like it if I tell you every service, don't talk to me about it today, but you talk to me next week? How many of you are going to remember it? I didn't come to preach today. Pastor Jim's coming. And he's going to bring the, the word today. I like a relationship. My sister, the first thing she said to me this morning, she said, I want my hug. Now, if she's at home and says she wants her hug, am I going to be able to hug her? Yes, you can hug somebody else. You're right. <laughs> but Pastor Jim's coming. I don't know what he's got here. He can read such small letters. Sister Susan, I noticed you can too. And it amazes me. Mine has to be a little bit bigger. But we're going to let him take his liberty. We know something's different today. Everybody look at Pastor Jim. Do y'all notice anything different? He's normal. So we're going to let him have the mic. There was a bunch of people up here praying for him this morning. Sister Cook's going, she's looking like my mama now. Pastor Jim, take your liberty, brother. Morning. This message is going to be a little bit different. Sher Sherry's already holding on for dear life. <laughs> Look over there. It's a good morning. Didn't hear a word. I said, you're holding on for dear life, I see. Yeah. <laughs> um, this message is going to be a little bit different. They seem to be more and more different every time. Um, who here lost any power this last week? at the house, the electricity. How long was your all's out? A couple hours, a few hours, two days? I feel your pain. We were 46 hours. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was, it was a long time for us. Um, and I made a few phone calls to the power company. And the last call I made, I spoke to a supervisor because we needed it back on. I know there were 8,000 other homes they said in Kanawha County that still didn't have it at that time too. But when they, when the previous rep told me, um, sir, the reason why they didn't finish the job was because they send everybody home because it gets dark for their safety, I thought, I don't recall that happening before. As a matter of fact, I remember when it's dark out, these bright lights flashing <laughs> everywhere while they're doing the work. But I wasn't going to call her a liar because she said for their safety. Okay, so I said, okay. Other well, than when I called back that afternoon, I asked to speak to the supervisor. They said, no, that person didn't know what they were talking about. I'm sorry. I said, okay. Well, we still needed it back on. And it came back on that Thursday night after we came home. And yes, um, but while it was off, did you have any heat in the house? Did you have gas heat? You had Oh, you have a wood stove. Good, good. Well, we didn't. <laughs> Our heat was electric, or is electric. Our um, hot water tank and we have a cooking stove, they're both gas. But our main source of electricity, or I mean main source of heat for the house is electricity. So when that goes out, especially in these temperatures, thankfully it wasn't below freezing or anything. Um, it got a little bit chilly after a while. We have blankets. We have um, each other. <laughs> but when they don't want to cuddle, when the kids don't want to cuddle or they cuddle with their elbows in the belly or something like that, it becomes a little more uncomfortable. So you say, okay, fine. We'll get the blankets and yeah, hide somewhere else. Um, we still had some fun. 
we still had some fun playing um, Mad Libs. Grace was there at the house, and apparently she said she'd never played Mad Libs before. So we, we got the book out and um, taught her how to play. Has everybody else know what Mad Libs is so I can rub it in her face? Oh, got a couple of shakes. Okay, fine. I can't rub. You got away with it this time, Grace. Ha, yeah. Um, Mad Libs is just simply a book where you fill out, you, you ask for nouns, verbs, adverbs, adjectives. And then you fill in those, the words that are randomly given into a story where all the blanks are. And then you read the story out loud, and it becomes very hilarious. And it made it a lot of fun for the kids to not focus on the darkness that they were in and focus on the cold or anything like that. They were laughing it up. It, Grace could hardly read through the stories because she was too busy laughing too. But when you have your power out at the house, it becomes cold. It becomes dark. Um, and sometimes, if you're like me, if you can't get the right kind of food in your belly, you tend to get a little bit short <laughs> with other folks. That's just one of my, my weaknesses. Crystal always says that uh, those Snickers commercials are always based off of me. You're not you when you're hungry. I have never turned into Betty White that I know of. But, but, um, it is, it is a challenge sometimes, I'll just put it that way, for, for Crystal especially. Um, you have, you have those, those moments sometimes when you don't have the things that you're expecting to have. You, God was taking that time, those 48 hours, and he said, you know, your turn's coming up to speak. I want you to speak about being plugged in to power. I said, okay, God, I've done that before. And he said, no, no, I want you to speak on more power. I'm waiting, Susan. That's your cue. Okay. Home improvement, Tim Allen. <laughs> more power, right? That's what I was picturing, and God's like, not this time, Jim. <laughs> Man, I was all ready to start making a costume and everything. I'd pull up things, and God's like, not this time. He said, more power. And then he reminded me of some of the blunders that Tim Allen had on that home improvement show of how Tim would get electrocuted. And then he reminded me of a, of a time when we first bought our house um, that I got electrocuted. And that was uh, a bit embarrassing and, and um, uh, painful. It, it involved me, Crystal and the kids were out of the house. I went ahead and said, you know, I'm going to go ahead and start moving things around we're just we're gonna make this house ours so there was an outlet on the wall that said um, AC for air conditioner and it had one of these funny looking plugs in the wall that had it looked like a two slanted eyes and a, and a slot here so it's a three prong but it was a bigger three prong I said we don't need that there I'll just take that thing out and put in a regular one no problem I've done that before for regular light switch outlets so I went over to um, our ceiling fan, which is in the center of the room, turned on the light, went over to the breaker box, started flipping the breakers. When that light went out, I said, perfect, not a problem. There's no power in this room. I go over there, I take the, the screwdriver, I undo the plate. And then I go in there and I say, okay, well, I see these screws just like any other outlet. So I go in and undo those screws. Still no problem. And I thought, well, I got to pull this thing out. As I go to reach in, I hear this voice saying, it's still on. I'm looking around, and it's not an audible voice, but it's back here, right? And I said, I start to shake at that moment. And I'm thinking, if I had one of those electric tools to where you could see if the power is still on, that would be great. But I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and reach around there and see what happens. I grab it. And I pull the top part out. No problem. Well, the bottom part needs to pull out. So I do this number. And when I did, for some reason, my arm went like that. That fast. I don't move that fast. That hurts. <laughs> well, it happened. <laughs> and, I, and I stepped back. <laughs> I said, <laughs> if I remember right, the exact words that came out of my mouth at that at that time were, 
Lord Jesus, please not now. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> I looked at the thing, and I said, how did that happen? I looked over at the box. The box is still off. The, the, the switches are. And I said, well, I'll fix that. <laughs> After I took a breather, I went over to the box, and I grabbed the main power switch and <laughs> did that, and the whole house went dark. Man, turned it back on, got the flashlights, went over there, ready to do this, real confident. And I said, Lord, I love you. <laughs> but my kids and my wife, I haven't said bye to them yet. <laughs> I said, I need this. So I pulled it out. Thank you. So I, uh, I unscrewed it the rest of the way, unhooked it, and I grabbed my, my spare regular outlet, and I put it in. Screwed it in, stuck it in there, put a regular plate over it like you normally would, and turned the power back on. Still going. <sighs> Crystal comes home a few minutes later with the kids, and I said, honey, I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> she came in, and I told her what happened, and she's like, okay, okay, well, no big deal, because, I mean, you're alive. Thank you for not dying, that type of thing. I went ahead and uh, went to work the next day, told my boss about it, and, of course, he said, you know you could have died. I said, yeah, the whole arm going backwards thing, that, that reminded me of that. And he said, you know you're joking, right? And I said, what do you mean? He said, you're joking. You didn't put a regular 110 outlet on that 220 voltage. I said, why not? I don't need that, that port there. I need a regular one. He's like, you call your wife before she plugs a vacuum cleaner into that thing and dies. So I called her up and said, honey, you know that port I was telling you about? Please don't touch it. <laughs> I want you alive. So I came home that evening, unscrewed the cover, turned off the power to the whole house, first time, undid that, um, that regular outlet part because I'm, I'm cheap sometimes. I want to keep the spare parts. Um, put electrical tape all over those wires like nobody's business. Put a flat cover on it and wrote on there, 220, in big, bold, black Sharpie. So I knew never to touch it again. And that story tells you, yes, I'm still alive because God was there. I mean, man, that hurt. And that's the left side. That was straight to the heart. That could have been the end. Um, and that was six years ago, basically. So it was a moment where I will never forget to double check 220 versus 110. Um, I, no, not that story. That one's a different time. We don't need to worry about that one. That, that'll get us redirected. It took me a second. No. Ignore. I'm sure you get. Man. No, 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 no. I don't need to go down memory lane right now. This story happened, and it is the illustration for what we're going to be talking about. <laughs> this is where we're going. No more side trails, you two. <laughs> All right. That said, I will be asking Danny, I have already asked him, he is coming out to the house to help me install a new <laughs> oven, which is not a 110, <laughs> so please pray for us. <laughs> Tomorrow we're going to be doing that after I get home from work. Um, when, when I was talking to God about this message and he said, you need more power, and he wanted me to remember about that situation, he said, but that's the wrong kind of power. You don't just do it yourself. You don't just plug into something and say, well, I need more power, so let's just crank up the amps. Let's just crank up the voltage. Let me go ahead and do it myself. So where does your source of power come from for this more power scenario? Do you, do you crank it up to 220? The answer is no, <laughs> unless you have the right appliance and the right uh, switches to flip. What we need is more power. In the Bible, it talks about the most powerful name under heaven and in heaven. And what is that most powerful name? Jesus. Yes, Jesus Christ. Has anybody ever wondered why? Why his name is the most powerful name? He was the sacrifice. He's the son of God. The Bible tells us straight up in chapter in chapter how about that the book of John chapter 1 verses 3 through 5 
It says, All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Right there. Everything that was made was made through Christ, Jesus Christ. Can't get much more powerful than that. It's black and white. So, note in here, we were talking earlier about when the power goes off at the house, how you tend to get cold sometimes if it's the winter time, or definitely how the lights go out and it's suddenly dark. If you plug into the right source of power, rather than using battery lamps and lanterns like we did over the last couple of days, or buying a generator and using that and hopefully not plugging into the wrong hole or anything like that, you've got the real source, and it says, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not understand it. What happens when you don't understand something? Do you stay there and continue to focus on it? Some of us try to, but there's a lot of us that actually say, you know what, forget it. After a while, I'm done. Goodbye. I'm out of here. That type of thing. You just, I'm not going to do that because this is an expensive mic. But you drop the mic, you're gone, right? The darkness doesn't understand the light, so it's out of here. It doesn't stick around. So when Christ comes in and provides the power, darkness and everything else that that represents of Satan has to flee. There's no place for it to hide. You shine that light, the light of Christ, around any corner, there's not going to be any shadow, there's not going to be any darkness left. It's gone. If you're using his power. So, throughout the Bible, Jesus shows examples of his power. Uh, one of those is in Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 through 8. We're going to go over that for just a moment. And this is talking about Jesus. It says, So he got into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own city. Then, behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. And at once some of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemies. Who does he think he is? But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. And he arose and departed to his house. Now when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God who had given such power to men. If you're like me, you read that story, and you're like, yeah, I've read this a thousand times. But then you forget about verse 8. Verse 8 says, when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. Jesus says later on, you will be doing greater things than me. Here, the people already recognized that. God gave them the power. Didn't say, oh, he's so special. We need to follow him. We need to follow this, this idol, this, this so-and-so. No, they recognized the fact that God has given power to men. Period. How do we soak into that? How do we, how do we plug into that source? Are you going to be like that, that sorcerer who said, I want to buy that power. I want to go ahead and, and pay you to, for that secret, that secret recipe of whatever incantation you're using, whatever chicken bones and blood or whatever it is you're using, I want to pay you for that. And the disciples said, no, this isn't for sale. It's free. And he couldn't understand that concept of just reaching out to the one who has the source of power. But these people did. They recognized that. So he gave us that example right there and said, or showed us that the power wasn't just for him. John recognized it, and he acknowledged that the people there at the site recognized that it's not just for Jesus. So how do we get this power? How do you get any power? You've got to plug into the source. 
You can't just sit there and say, okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Even with a solar panel, you're drawing sources before anybody else thinks that. Don't know who was, who was thinking that. Solar panels do do that, but they draw on a source called the sun. So don't even go there. You gotta have a source. You can't just say this piece of paper, you now have the power. And we're waiting. It's gonna be a while. It's not gonna happen. You gotta have a source of power. It's physics. God designed physics and scientists are still trying to figure it out. And yet they wonder why they can't understand everything about the theory of evolution and all this other stuff. Another side topic. Back it away for a second. Jesus was plugged into the source. How did he get plugged in? Or where do we see that he was plugged into the source? Because he straight up said, this is how I have my power. Not only that, it wasn't like he was standing on the little stone and saying, nanner, 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 I have power and you don't. Didn't happen that way. He said it was free for everybody else too. And not only that, he didn't just say free for the taking in a little box by the side of the road. He said he told us how to get it. And this is in John 17. During this lengthy prayer. But in this portion of the prayer, he says, this is 17, 20 through 23. He's praying. He says, I do not pray for these alone, meaning the disciples but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be as one, or be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also believe, I'm sorry, that they also may be one in us, plugged in, that the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one, I in them, and you and me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. 